Here is a lovely husky that I have to do a portrait of. His name is Torak. Well, actually, he's passed away, poor guy. At f the age of 15, I think he was huge. His nickname was Beastie. But anyway, I'm about to embark on cutting him out with my trusty saw. And then I'll be enameling him. Here is the dog that I was uh, cutting out earlier. So he's all cut out, all his um, individual pieces. Tongue, nose. So what I'm going to do um, with all of these is that I'm going to enamel them all separately. I have to do the counter enamel on the back and um, then I'm going to do the enameling on the front. And this is a husky called Torak. Okay, here's our first piece. This is the shoulders of the dog, and this is the liquid enamel, liquid form enamel that I'm going to put on as uh, my counter enamel. Let's pour, plop it on. Let's see, I find it easier to use a, a one of these um, sort of wooden sticks. I think they're tongue, called tongue depressors. It doesn't have to be applied beautifully, it just needs to be more or less even. Some of these areas down here obviously have a little bit of grease still on them, that's okay. Don't worry about getting any over the edges, that's fine. Because when it's dry, we can wipe that off. Okay, I think that's fine. Now we need to wait that for that to dry and do the other pieces, and then we can... Um and here are our pieces. He looks like a bear, actually, this dog. So these now, these are still wet, they're sitting on top of the kiln and the kiln has, has to get to 800 degrees. Anyway, that's fine, these are going to dry and then we'll get on with it. Now I'm going to do the dog's chest and shoulders first, I'm using white. AD mesh sifter. I just realized I'm wearing the wrong glasses, but anyway, we'll do for now. I'm going to give it a decent coat. It will definitely have a second coat anyway. This is just to get the base coat of the white on. Add a little bit more. Okay, I'm going to fire that. Probably what I'll do is put it in in one direction for an, uh, one and a half minutes and then take it out, turn it around, put it in the other direction because the kiln is hotter on the far side than, than it is closer to the door and I want to get it evenly done. Okay, and now I'm going to do a couple of things while I'm waiting for the chest to cool down. This is an 80 mesh sifter as well. I'm doing the rims around the eyes and this is kind of the black, these black lips. So we'll just put a layer of black on these. These will have to be done twice as well, I'd say. So here's our Husky's chest and we need to do a bit more. Now, what I also need to do is have a look at this picture. This is, um, just a rough sketch of the, the of Torak. It's really just for me to see what colors, now the colors aren't particularly accurate with the tongue and nose and that, but I just wanted to know which colors were going where. 
Um, so I'll try and leave some of the greys out around here. I'll have to put grey in there anyway. But I'd like to get, you know, some of this, keep some of these greens because I think they're really, really nice. So that's what I'm working from. Keep it a bit lighter. Now you can see that I've got a coin in here just to force some of the bigger granules through. And if it ends up being too, too, you know, there's too much gray or it's a little bit too dark, I can just add white. So we're going to see what that's like first before we do any more. Okay. I'm going to fire that. I think I'm going to leave that one as it is and we'll just ta look, take a look and see. Okay, this is what we have so far. Our chest. Uh, just make sure it's not too hot. It's, that's nice. I like that green. It's a little bit pale elsewhere, so I may, I probably will end up putting some more um, grey on it, or some grey on it, or I may just try and burn some of this off by overfiring. And we have the eyes and the lips, and this is just a sample piece just to see how our Torax Widow's Peak might look. I'm very happy with those colours. Uh, so that was just a piece, sample piece. These are going to be, I'm going to be doing those um, to test out colors for the nose because he has a pinkish nose, pink and black nose. And I want to try the pinks for the, uh, for the tongue as well. So I'll be doing test cases with those. And then here is our famous fellow. Um, that's the color of the copper after it uh, has been heated up. And we'll be doing that as well very soon. As always, remember to dispose carefully of your enamels. These are all leaded enamels. So you just pour it back in to the jar without flapping any of the powder around. Now we're going to be using the black again, but not for a while, so I'm going to just fold this up. Again, don't crumple it up. You may as well just do it tidy because it doesn't flap around then. And straight into the rubbish. Next. Okay, now we're going to work on the face. And what we have here is, so we've got the dog's face. This is a just a cheap water-based marker. And I need to do the dog's widow's peak. Um, like that. So what I want to do is I'm going to um, <clears throat> enamel the white but I'm going to leave out the widow's peak. So I basically want the widow's peak to stay copper. And so I've created this stencil and I use this water-based marker and I actually keep dipping it in water to draw uh, a, a stencil that doesn't have a hard edge. So this one has a really soft edge because it basically got really really wet and then I just pulled it out gently so it's got a very soft edge instead of having something really really hard edge because he's got a fluffy face sort of a furry face so don't some, want something with a hard edge so these are the two pieces of stencil so we can do away with this face stencil and what we want you know we'll be using the face stencil later on to cover up the white once that's done so I've cut this out just to get so I can sort of line it up and see where um, it goes. It matches here, right? So it's there. It doesn't have to be perfect. So that matches there, and then I can see his hair through. There will be some white getting onto that hair, that little top of his head, and I'll just brush that off with a um, with a paintbrush. <clears throat> now, let me get my white, and this is just to stop the messiness. That's why 
I've got all this white stuff. Now, uh, the other thing with this stencil, I'm not going to be keeping this stencil. It's not something I'll be holding on to. So I don't mind if it gets a little bit wet or a bit damaged or anything like that. So if you wanted to, if you're trying to do a stencil this way and you, you, really there are stencils that you're not going to be hanging on to, you can always spray them with a little bit of water so that your enamel sticks to it and then it's a little bit easier to remove it without dropping the enamel all over the place. Now, I don't think I'll have too much problem, but we shall see. You never know, uh, but we'll give it a try. Now, let me just put my mask on. So we're going for the white. I'll do around the stencil first. And I know there's black around his eyes and a little bit of black around his nose. Now, I have a feeling that that, I don't want to look too close to the eye. And you see these lines I did around his mouth, just to give around his nose a bit of definition. I don't want to put so much white on that that just clogs up those lines, so I have to be careful of that. If they do get clogged up, it doesn't really matter. I will use a toothpick just to draw through them again before it's enameled. And as you can see, I've put a coin in there again. I want it around this thin bit. I will be enameling this twice, firing this at least twice. Sorry, firing the white at least twice because we want it to be good and white. And now let's move that stencil and see if my skills are up to snuff. They may not be. It's a kind of a flimsy, it's because it's just paper. He looks a bit like Mickey Mouse. Actually, looks very like Mickey Mouse here. Now, I'm also going to just. Here's a picture of him, black and white. But that all looks fine. I'm gonna just brush off any excess here. I'm not gonna worry about little bits like this kind of thing because, um, now is that a bit, too, I think that's a bit too close to his head. Get rid of that as well. These little bits will just burn off. So that's not an issue. I think that's good. I'm gonna, and I think even though that looks like it's kind of covered up, that will come off as well. So I'm not even gonna bother. It's so thin that it'll burn off. Right, I'm gonna fire this and then we'll take a look at it. Here's our first firing of the Husky, straight out of the kiln. So you can see around the top of his head, all of that uh, copper oxide, it's sort of popping up. Let me just see if I can get something. You see it's popping up. So that's coming off. We're just going to leave it sitting there. Um, <clears throat> some of the colors have come, some of the oxides have come through the white, which is nice. We're going to let it cool, rub all the edges around with a little scrubber because I don't want any of that black chipping off, any of the black oxides chipping off the edges, which means we'll need to give his head a scrub as well. That's absolutely fine. And then we'll get on with layer number two. And I'm gonna try and keep some of these lovely dark layer, lovely dark areas while making the rest of it white where it really needs to be white. So that is Torak thus far. He's this cute, cute dog. Okay, here we have our lovely Torak again. And you can see all that copper there. I actually really love that look, but he is gray and black. Uh, I'm gonna do a second sifting. Put my, put my stencil on again. It doesn't matter if it's loose. Again, this is a dog with fur. So we want it to be organic looking. I'm gonna start down here. Uh, I'm going to look at my picture. I'm going to put just a light sifting over around here. Put a lot around his eyes because I'm going to be dealing with his eyes separately. Uh, bring with me.
Okay, I think we're going to go for that and then just see how that looks. I'm going to put a little bit more here. And there. Okay, it's kind of one of those things where you need to just judge it as you're doing it. And um, we'll fire it, we'll look at it again. This is going to be fired multiple times, so it's not. I'm not too worried at this stage. Let's just move this out of the way. Right, let's do that again. Okay, this is what we have so far. Um, you might be able to see that the... I underfired this enamel. It has a speckled appearance which is good. When you're firing something, when you know you're going to be fire, firing something a lot, um, it's good to do the, the initial colors to, fire, to sort of under fire them. Unless you really want them burning off like this, which is fine, but you kind of have to monitor that. So let's have a look. There, we're there. Um, and now, which sort of seems counterintuitive, but you'll see, I'm going to put white over the whole thing. And I will probably leave out, try and leave a few more areas out again. But I'm going to be putting white over what I have just been leaving off. And there's a reason for that. And I need more white. I'm not going to put it everywhere. Um, a bit more here, here. Right, I think we're going to fire that now. This area will be much darker than the rest of the white. So we'll see. Okay, here we have him again. So where his sort of a nibbly bit of head fringe there is quite nice and black. So the sides of his widow's peak are grayish, which is good. The rest of his face is very nice and white. What I may do, but we'll see as it goes, I'm going to use um, an London stone to take some of the white off, which is basically like scratching it off so we can get some of those lovely gray tones. And um, then we'll do the, the transparent dark gray and the black. And then we'll do some shading around his nose, around his eyes. And we'll put it all together and bit of a, do a bit of a review before we carry on with the ears. Right, here's Torak so far. I'm pretty pleased. Um, <clears throat> now, we have to, we're going to do the hematite around here, but then the black. Now, his eyes are black like he's got black eyeliner on but we do need to do a little bit of white here and here we won't do the eyeballs just yet they're going to be brown I need to do some test colors for the nose and the tongue I've decided I'm actually going to leave the collar copper I'm not going to enamel it I'll polish it up instead I think that would be really nice I need to do the ears and then we need to do some of the kind of you know the dark patches around here around here around here some of his little his little tash here and all that tooth needs to go there so we've got little, we've got still got details to put in but there it is so far and I'm actually pretty happy with that and let's get going to do more of the face right now I put my stencil on to cover up the white and I'm using a transparent hematite grey I'm going to put quite a lot on. Okay. And now what I'm also going to do is I'm going to get my picture and see about putting a little bit of 
gray in other parts of his face. I'm trying to do this very delicately and one of the ways you can do it is to, to rub your finger along this sort of ridged area. I'm not putting too much because I just want to see where this is going. And also that's a very high mesh, mesh size. 150 means not much is coming through. So I'm going to grab another one, 80. That'll let a lot more through. There we go, you can see that now. sideburns and we need just a bit more and using even smaller sifter a really tiny little one like that so he's kind of got a bit around his mouth here Here. And what I'm going to have to do with that is because it's gone all messy. I'll take some of that off. Now you might notice as well that. Uh, <clears throat> you can see that some of the granule sizes are, are, these ones are quite dark, which means, you know, they will look different to those ones up there, and that's fine. Put a bit more around here. Not sure about that. Okay, I think we're going to go for that because we can add more, obviously, as we go. Let's we'll see how that goes. Now we're going to get on with the black. Um, this is the grey done. And I, as you can see, I sort of scoured away some of the edges around the nose and mouth just because they're very black. And once I scour some of the when I've stoned back some of this enamel, that exposed copper will go black, and I think it just could give a nice look. Um, so we're going to go ahead with our black, because he's got a much blacker area around where he, his head meets his ears and the top of his head, so we want to get that done. And I'm going to use a number of different sifters, just depending on the area, but we'll start with the big sifter first. And this is an 80 mesh shifter. We may end up doing the black more than once. We're going to see what it looks like first. So there we go. It's on the top of his head there. There's quite a bit of black around his ears. Around where his ears meet his head. Black there. Now it's kind of hard to see. I'm going to start using this one. Just to get those areas there. It's a bit more accurate. And now what I'm going to do is use this little one because he sort of has his the black sort of... Okay, that's a lot. So creeps down a little bit here. And some of the black granules are much blacker than other granules. 
just because it's, you know, they're bigger and they'll have, have a slightly different color. So I want to blend them in a little bit. I'll put a little bit down here as well. This tiny bit around here. Now I think we'll go ahead with that and see. Just doing it very, very gently. Just do a little bit more around here. Dogs always have such lovely eyeliner-y look. Natural cosmetics. Now, we'll fire that, and let me just have a closer look anywhere else, need a bit more. We'll fire that and then we'll see what happens. And I'm also, I'm gonna put a few dots around here, because I think this is nearly finished. So I'm gonna put um, some black beads, let me get those. And I just use, uh, little glass beads just to add where his whiskers will come out and they give it nice kind of little bit of a 3d look which I think is always quite cute and if you're ever buying beads to do some enameling with Make sure they're glass. You don't want to use plastic because, um, for, uh, for obvious reasons, you don't want to use plastic. Okay, I might just put one up here. I don't want them to be even because I think I want them to have a even look and I think that's good okay I think that's probably better um, now I'm going to do the ears and then we'll have a review of the whole the whole guy and I you can see I'm using um, the stencils again because I want the edges of the ears to be black. We'll be using black. It's always good to have a bit of um, a bit of the copper oxides on. His ears are sort of white and hairy on the inside. So I'm gonna just try and get that look. Yeah, I think that's good. I'm going to go for that. May just take a little bit off here. Uh, I want to make sure it matches up with the face, so I need to be careful. And I'll fire those. Here are dog ears. Um, so there's white and then there's uh, oxidized edges. I'm going to cover those up again. Again, I'm not worrying too much about bit, little bits peeping out. And I'm going to use a transparent um, enamel on these because it should bring, let me just get this, it should bring so the pinkish up. Can you see that pink? That's the sample I did. So it should bring, so it should pull some of the copper goldeny copper colors up from the bottom which could be nice I'm not going to put too much on and what I'm also going to do is and I'm not sure how well this will work 
but if it doesn't work, I'll use some white glass. What I was going to do is just try to use something sharp, like these tweezers, and just do a few, because he's got all sorts of curly hairs in here, because he was such a hairy animal. So I'm just doing a few swirls. Now the white may not be thick enough for that to really come through after firing, but we'll see. Now we've got our ears and yeah, I think that came out quite nicely. I just want it to be a little bit of pink. I think it'll probably get a bit more pink. We'll see. And I'm putting these stencils back on because I want to cover up the white. Um, and just do a really thin coat of white here because I want it to match the body, the head. And that's how the head was done. So what we were doing is firing this again and that's okay and all these areas will like these areas that have nothing will go blacker which is good and then these will kind of go greenish I think um, and then we'll do the gray and black on those as well okay here we have Torak so far um, so the ears now, you can see they're white around there. They're going pinkish, more pinkish. And I want to do, uh, you know, I need to match where his ears join his head so that they are very much the same. I did more black around the eyes. Um, I actually, off camera, I fired his body again and, and added some... Uh, I think that's blurred and I added a little bit of the gray just to make it join up so so far so good we have the nose the mouth and the eyes to do and we have to finish off those ears now we've got our ears and we're gonna do those I'm gonna do a little bit of gray around them around the edges and a little bit in here I'm not gonna bother to use the stencils I don't think I need to and then we'll be doing black and then we'll be having a look again at Torak and seeing how that goes. So I'm using an 80 mesh sifter and go around these edges. And here. Now that's quite, the grain's very large in there. So I'm not, they're not going through very easily. I'm going to do a little bit along where the head meets the ears. That'll have to be much more black. But we're going to start with that and see how that looks. Now for the black. I wanted to blend in with the white and the grey and I think what I'm going to do is use one of these small ones as well so that it's nice and dark around the edges here this Now, hopefully that'll be enough. 
Okay, um, <clears throat> now well, I'm waiting for those ears to cool down. We're going to do the nose. So he's got a pinkish nose, black and pink nose. What I did with this nose, I actually fired it just with its... That's the counter enamel on the back. I fired it so it's gotten this oxidized look. And now I'm going to do his, very, his nose very black around the edges. And obviously he's, his nostrils will be called out. So I'm going to do this black on the edges here. Now that's very dark black. It's got very big um, granules. And what I think what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to put the grey on top of that but it means I have to change the sheet of paper because I can't use this sheet of paper so what I'm going to do is just move that away get another sheet of paper get another lifter so what I don't want is to get mix up the black and the and the pay and the um, transparent grey. So here's our transparent grey. I'm going to get a big sifter. I'm going to cover it like that. I don't want too much grey on it. And I'm going to fire it and we'll see how that looks. Here's our nose. Now I actually, um, after I came out of the kiln, I stoned back a little of the nose to get the, the copper so that it's more like his actual nose and now it's all scratched and scraped there but it needs a bit more black anyhow so what I'm going to do is put more black around here then I'm going to get a transparent and put the transparent over it so we're going to go for the black first get his nostrils organized Now, I'm only using more black because he needs more black. Uh, you don't need to add, if you scratch enamel, and you can see all the scratch marks like you can see here, um, if you just fired it again, the scratch marks would be gone. You don't have to put more on, but I'm putting more on because we need more. So now I'm going to get a new sheet. Let me see, let me get rid of this one first. New clean sheet, clean sifter, and you get some transparent. And really, I just want it in the center, but it doesn't matter if it goes into the block as well. Now, I think that should be enough. Okay, this is where we are. Pretty happy with it, actually. Now what I need to do is the tongue, the eyes, um, the tooth, there's a little tooth here, the tongue, the eyes, the tooth, and that's it. Now I need to do a little bit of white in these black areas too. Um, and then I have to do something about this copper. I'll probably polish it or I'll, I'll do some sort of texture on it. And then we should be ready to frame. I'm going to just do the black eyeball. the black uh, pupil. I'm not going to do the white yet. I'm going to fire these first, see how they look, and then we'll come back and probably do another coat. I've decided to put the eyes back into the face just so we can have another look at them. I think they're good so far. I'm happy with the color of the brown. And I need to um, do a bit more black and then do the white. So, I'm just going to add a bit of black here. Because his eyes are actually quite dark. I'm 
there's just a sliver of brown showing. Remove that. Remove these. And now, what I'm going to do before I do the white, I'm actually going to put them. I'm actually going to put them onto this now. Uh, moving them is not as easy as you might imagine. Well, actually, you know what? Sorry, I'm going to leave them exactly as they are because I've just realized I need to... It's easier for me to do the white when they're in place. You know, when they're in place relative to one another. So here we have our white. And I'm going to do that. I'm going to have to switch this off to find my little sifter. So hold on a sec. found it. It's this little line sifter I'm looking for. This basically has just one tiny little hole at the bottom. So you scoop out your your enamel. You do have to be careful that you don't get stuff attached the outside of it because then it'll go all over the place. Now I want it top right. Okay. Right, let's hope that that's uh, the way it should be. I'm going to put them in the kiln, fire them, and then we'll reassemble them. In fact, what I might do is I'll do the white on these eyes too, and um, then we'll have another review. While our eyes are uh, cooling down, we're going to do this tooth here. And what I'm going to use is some of this liquid white. It's called an enamel pen. It doesn't really work as a pen. You're supposed to have syringe bits at the top, um, but they get clogged up. Anyhow, there's no point in adding my woes to your woes. So basically what I'm going to do is squeeze a bit out. It's quite thick and it's just kind of, I think it's just kind of nice as a bit of a tooth here. No. I'll rearrange it so it's a bit better looking. We don't want him looking like he's in need of dental work. And in fact, I think uh, it's sticking out a bit too much. That's better. We just really want the suggestion of a tooth. I think that's okay. Right, let's go for that. that. Now this has to dry obviously before it goes into the kiln. And one of the things about letting things dry is that you can see if it's sort of smeared elsewhere. Okay, and then we just have the tongue to do. Just realized I went ahead and did the tongue without filming it. Anyhow, um, such is life. The tongue, I've used a transparent pink, rose pink. Now with transparents, you normally have to um, put a clear flux underneath, fire it, then you put the transparent color because otherwise it goes very black. But this transparent happens to be quite opaque. And I did want to get, I didn't want it to be too bright pink. Um, so anyway, that is the result. I did a little through the tongue there and now I'm going to actually do a second layer and the thing with the transparent colors it would be like stacking up sheets of glass you know you have to look through one sheet of glass and you can see it's totally transparent you stack ten of them together and they start becoming opaque. It's the same with enamels. So I'm going to put a bit more on here put quite a lot on and fire it and then hopefully it'll be a good tongue color and that will be then we'll be finished. I just have to uh, do the collar and then we'll be finished. Okay, here's Torak. I'm happy with him. I'm very happy with the tongue came out nicely. I hope you can see it's a little bit 
Oh, high contrast in here. Um, but I'm happy with him. I did his collar. The collar is just in copper. I drilled a couple of holes so that it's like a like a proper collar. Um, and that's him. Now I need to frame him. And here's the drawing. So that's the drawing. That's the dog. And I'm really happy with how he came out. His nose came out pretty well. Okay.